Hallelujah. This morning, I've been given an assignment to minister on the topic called, Why Praise? I don't know if anybody else is just ready for that word. Let's just go ahead and pray. The Spirit of the living God, oh, I surrender myself to you today. Lord, as a pen of a ready writer, I stand before you, ready to be used by you. Lord, I am only a vessel. And so I pray, oh God, that you touch the heart of your children. Lord, let them not see me, oh God. When they look, let them see you. When they open their ears, oh God, let them hear you. Father, Lord, I pray that you move in our midst. Lord, your praise will be rekindled in our heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, do that which only you can do. And at the end of the day, only you will take all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. The topic is why praise? When I heard that topic, the next thing that came to my heart is, why not praise? The Bible says that God inhabits in the praises of his people. So when I hear the word praise, I'm excited to praise him. Because I know that when I praise, God is there. What is praise? When we praise, that is an opportunity for us to proclaim the goodness of God. When we praise God, we acknowledge him. We acknowledge him for who he is. When we praise God, we glorify him. And so praise is a personal thing. It is beyond us coming and just dancing. When we praise God, our heart is connecting to him. Can I get a hallelujah? Why praise? I just have a few points here because I know a lot of us cannot wait to get into praising and honoring God this morning. One thing I just want us to understand is praise has a lot to do with posture of our hearts. And one of the things that I had here is we praise God because he deserves our praises. God is worthy of all praises. Psalms 145.3 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Hallelujah. You see, one main thing that influences when you praise a person is the knowledge you have of that person. So if Kobe Bryant should come in here now, some people don't know that name. They will not budge. They will just see a tall man coming in here. If LeBron James should come in here, some people will not budge because they don't know who he is. But I know if my middle child was to be here, he loves basketball. If he should see them, he'll be jumping up and down. Mommy, look at Kobe Bryant because he knows them. He praises them. He's always talking about their achievements and their skills. So when you praise a person, it is because you know who they are. And so we serve a God who is mighty. And so maybe some of us don't know him. But our God is worthy to be praised. He is beyond any man. Why praise? Because our God deserves all the praise. In the scripture in the book of 2 Samuel 6 and 14. We talk about how David danced. He danced so gloriously, we even have a song about it. I will dance like David danced. When David was dancing at that particular moment, the Ark of Covenant was being brought into the city of David. And so the first time when he was coming from the home of Abinadab, the Ark was about to fall when they were bringing it into the city of David. So the Bible says that Uzzah, the son of Abinadab, tried to hold the Ark of God. But the Bible says that God struck him dead. So David was angry. Then again, he was afraid. So he said, maybe God is frustrated at us right now. This is not the right time for us to bring this ark into the city of David. So the Bible said that they took the ark into the home of Obededom. Because they were thinking, ah, this is not the moment we want to bring it. Maybe God is angry. But the scripture said that God blessed Obededom for the three months that he was, the ark was in his house. So David heard. He was excited. He said, now is the time for us to bring the ark back into the city of David. So when they brought the ark this time, he was dancing, he was rejoicing. It finally came into the city of David. The Bible said that when David was rejoicing, Micah, the daughter of Saul, his wife, looked at him and she despised him from her heart. I thought she was ignorant because she did not understand the God that David was praising. So she went down to him. My husband, what's going on? VOP is singing, you are dancing like this, your whole body is showing all over the place. What's that? So David told her, he said, you don't understand. The God that I'm praising is the God that made me king in place of your father. She had told him that all the maids are looking at you. The servants are seeing you. The way your dress is all over the place. It's like even those maids, I know I look worthy in their eyes. 
I realized that the difference was that Micah did not understand. The Bible said that because of that, the Lord shot her womb. One thing I always say at Ignite is that it takes understanding to stand, and it takes understanding for you to be outstanding. So when you understand that this God is worthy of my praise, you don't need to be kindled to praise him. Every opportunity will pray, have you praise him. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why do we praise him? We praise him because praise reassures us and reminds us that we serve a God who is able. You see, my circumstances and situation is not going to be what determines whether I praise God. Because whether I'm in a good mood or a bad mood, it is not about my mood. It is about God. And so even if my situation is not perfect, I will praise God because he's that one that perfects all that concerns me. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Let me share a quick testimony. Um, when my husband and I got married, and I got pregnant twice, I had a miscarriage. The third time I got pregnant... And, you know, I waited, you know, let me not be too eager for, to go for my prenatal. I waited till I was close to five months. So we went to the hospital together. When we went there for the prenatal together, um, the doctor tried to, like, check the heartbeat of the baby. He wasn't hearing anything. So he said I should go for an ultrasound. I went for an ultrasound. The person who was doing the ultrasound had to call the doctor. He said, you know what? They told me then that the baby that I was carrying in my womb at that moment was no longer breathing. So because of that, they had to do an evacuation. And I was so, so devastated. So my husband had to sign. Because he had to sign to grant permission. That they had permission to evacuate the baby from my womb. And I saw as he was signing, I could see the tears in his eye. Because a man that had thought, oh, we are here to start a process for our child. And to be told that that baby has to be brought out. So we went home. And when we went home, you know, after the evacuation, I was sad. You know, I was drowsy. I slept. My husband has a routine. He will wake up around 4 a.m. And he will begin to play his, this is his called shekere or tambourine. He will do that. He will praise. He will dance. So that same morning after, I heard him doing his normal routine. And my thought was, you are praising God at this time. Because my situation did not align with my mind to think that God was worthy of me praising him at that moment. I said, if I needed to praise him, why didn't God prevent this baby from dying in my womb? So I covered my ears with a pillow. I said, I don't want to hear any sound of praise. But my husband continued with his routine. Over time, I said, you know what, God? Help my heart. Because my heart was hurting. I said, God, help me. I don't want to take this anger on you. But I've realized that sometimes when we're going through a storm, we want to live into that misery. So that's why I said, praise reassures us that our God is able. And I felt that my husband understood that. So he kept on praising God. After a while, I continued. I said, okay, God, I will praise you in this storm. A few months later, I got pregnant, you know. I said, okay, I don't want to have this baby in Nigeria. Then we're living in Nigeria. So I traveled. And then at 28 weeks, my water broke. I called my husband. On the phone, he was still praising. I said, okay, we're going to praise God. We will praise him. This is God. He is mighty. We will praise him. And then I gave birth. At 28 weeks, the baby was fine. There was nothing wrong with him. We named him Toluwanemi, meaning I am God's property. I belong to God. By the grace of God, that was 18 years ago. And Toluwanemi graduated from high school two months ago. Whenever I look at my son, I see a product of praise that in the storm before he came forth, I was broken, I was hurt. But I had a husband who was wise. He kept on praising God during the storm. And I held on to that. The Bible says that those who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. And so that scripture makes me to realize that your strength lies in the knowledge of your God. When you know who God is, no matter what that situation is, you will praise God. No matter how dark it is, you will praise God. Do you know that the devil loves to steal our joy? So when you're happy, he's sad. When you praise God, you shift your gaze away from your trouble and you focus on God. The Bible says that he is the one who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above and beyond all we can ask or think. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? Hallelujah! Amen. Why should we praise God? We praise God because praise commands its attention and it opens doors. The scripture talked about Paul and Silas in Acts 16, 25 to 26. We know how they prayed. If you want to go ahead and read that scripture. 
they prayed and they sang hymns. They were captive in prison. But God let them out. The doors were open. The prisoners were set free. Praise takes you out of that prison. The enemy wants us to be in bondage. Listen, everybody is going through a storm. You see, the beautiful cloth and everything is covering it. But everybody has a secret. What is your secret when you are going through that storm? For some, it is praise. Some, they run to alcohol. Some, they run to God. I mean, they, 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 some run to God. Some run to drugs. But we have strength and we run to God and we praise. There is something about praise that it takes our mind off that issue. Is there any of you just here when you're just going in your car and you're just praising? You just feel that mood. That bad mood just goes away. Praise is all we are expected to do. Why praise? Praise is a weapon. And it goes ahead of us to smoothing every rough part. There's this song that, like it says, first there was fragrance, then there was fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. Hallelujah. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. Praise is a weapon. One of the kings that I like most in the scripture, and because I like the story about him, is King Jehoshaphat. The book of 2 Chronicles 20, from verse 1. The Bible said that Jehoshaphat, as a king of Judah, he got information that some kings were coming to battle against him. The king of Ammon, the king of Moab, three different kings, they were coming with their army to destroy Jehoshaphat and Judah. And so when Jehoshaphat heard this, he was sad. Have anybody, or any of you heard about the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Because that is what the enemy do, well, that's what they do. When they know that they have a common enemy, they come together. But the Bible says that surely they may gather. But if it's that gathering, it's not in the name of the Lord, they will surely fail. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? Jehoshaphat had something that they did not have. Because they said, oh, we are more than him. As we are ganging together, we have an army that he doesn't have. But Jehoshaphat had something. He had God. As a king, he knew that there was one ahead of him, which was the king of kings. The Bible said Jehoshaphat prayed. He began to pray to God. His heart was heavy. He called everybody around him. Kingdom icon, children's department, ignite, man Zion, let us pray. I'm just paraphrasing. So everybody came together and prayed. Joseph had called men, children, all of them. They came and they began to pray. The Bible said that when they were praying, the Lord put a word in somebody's mouth. Um, Jehazel, the son of Ezekiah, Zechariah, and he said to them, God is saying to you, the battle is not yours. Tomorrow, go to where those people that are coming to fight you are. He said, I will take that battle and I'll fight it on your behalf. God is saying to Man Zion today, the battle is not yours. Tomorrow is today because this is that media praise. The next day, they gathered. Jehoshaphat began to tell them, he said, you know what? Let's rejoice. So in front of the army, he put the Levites, the people that were going to sing ahead when they were going to battle. Behind the people that were singing, the ones that had the weapon and the arrow, he put them at the back. Imagine the United States Army saying they want to go to battle and they'll say only VOP must stand in front. We need them to sing because there is a God that ahead of them. Then those that have AK-47, they are at the back. You know, when you think about it, it doesn't make sense. You'll be like, this doesn't make sense. How can the people that have voice to sing be in front? But that's what Joseph did because he had understanding of the God that was going ahead of him. Second Chronicles 20, 22, the Bible said that as they praised, tell somebody next to you, as they praised, as they praised, what happened next? The Bible says that God put confusion in the camp of the enemy. You see, the people that came to fight with them, they started fighting each other. Then when one army finished killing all of them, they now started killing each other. By the time Jehoshaphat and his team and his army, they got to that place, everybody that was coming to gang up against him, that was coming to fight against Jehoshaphat, they were all dead. Not only that, there were treasures around them. There was money. There was gold. There were so many things. The Bible said that Jehoshaphat was feared because they heard what his God had done. The Bible says that those who know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. Because they praised. I have good news for somebody here today. Because I don't know what that battle is. 
But because you came for the media praise, your heart is intentional. The scripture says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so as you praise, the Lord is going to grant our hearts joy. Praise is a weapon. That praise will go where you cannot even expect it to go. They gathered together. What was the chances that the same enemy will fight against each other? You see, the God that we serve is the God that does the supernatural that you are not expecting. The Bible says that eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard the things that our God can and will do. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? Because they praised. We serve a God who is mighty. What is that mountain before the, the Rubabel? It will become level ground. What is that mountain before that Mount Zion? It will become level ground. The Bible says this is Mount Zion. It is a place of deliverance. This is Mount Zion. We will possess our possession. This is Mount Zion. We will grow from strength to strength. It doesn't matter what that battle is. It doesn't matter how tough it is. What matters is the God that is ahead of us. He's the one who is Jehovah HaMashiach. He's the one who is the anointed one. The Bible says that he is a lion of the tribe of Judah. This is me praising God. The Bible says that he is the rose of Sharon. He is the king of glory. The ancient of days. The one who opens a door that nobody can close. The one who when he closes a door, nobody can open it. Hallelujah. You see, when you praise God, the enemy will remind you reasons why you should not praise God. My husband was praising God in the room. I was using pillow to cover my ear because I did not want to hear the praise. All I was thinking is, why would he? Me, myself, I was like, why is he praising God? Baby just died. I could not see ahead. I was only looking at my situation and I wanted to just linger in that sorrow. You see, when you praise God, the devil reminds you of reasons why you shouldn't praise him. Oh, you that your marriage is in trouble. Oh, you that your children are all over the place. Oh, you that you are not married. Oh, you that you are broke. Oh, you that you don't have a job. Oh, you that this. The Bible says that the devil is a liar and is the father of lies. John 8, 44. So when it comes, it is lies. I refuse to listen. I say, I will still praise God. My situation does not limit me. My God is the one that I'm here to praise. My God is able to save. He's the one that split the Red Sea. He's the one that speaks and the dead comes to life. I don't know how bad that situation is, but I am here to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to remind us also, praise is not restricted to the four walls of the church. Sometimes we come to church and you say, service has to end early. Thanksgiving is only such and such. We are angry. No. Guess what? When you leave this place, you have the opportunity to go to your house and praise. Do you know that this is not the only place you can praise? You can praise in your house. You can praise in your car. You can praise anywhere you are. It is not restricted to here. When we praise, it is about our hearts. It is not about dancing skills. Sometimes oh, everybody, we can't come to the front to dance. Oh, why? I want to come to the front to dance. It is not about whether we come to the front or not. Even if you stand in your position. There's a scripture in 2 Chronicles 20. The Bible said that God told, Jehoshaphat told them, he said, take position. It doesn't matter whether you dance to the front. Take position. And they took their position and they danced and praised God. Because they had understanding of who God is. Their heart was aligning with God. Their focus was the God that they came to praise. Whether I move, whether I'm able to turn around, whether I have to dance from the back to the front, my point is here, I am praising God. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? We serve a God who is awesome. And I don't know who that person is. I said earlier, I said, so many of us have gone through fire, but we do not smell like smoke. I've had time where I've had to do two different biopsies because I had a negative diagnosis. I remember coming to Ignite, even while they were praising, me, I was crying. It wasn't a cry of sorrow. It was like, God, you are going to take charge. I serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we can ask or think. And God took charge. So I do not talk to you about a God that I do not know. I talk talking to you about a God that I have experienced. Is there somebody in this place today that is ready to praise God? I don't know what your situation is. I don't want to hear that situation because we have a God who is able. I'm not just here to wind you. I'm here to encourage you in our spirit. You see, as of that time, I had that miscarriage that I did not want to hear praise. I was a worker. I was in the children's department. So somebody would think she's a Christian. She's in trouble. Why can't she praise? But I did not want to hear that praise. That's why we need to listen. The Bible says that his word will transform us. I don't know who that person is. 
The Bible says that Jehoshaphat and his team, they prayed, then they praised. Can you lift up your voice to God? And say, God, help me. I was in a situation I was not ready to pray. But I knew that there was a God I could pray to. And I said, God, I don't feel like praising you right now. Help me. And the scripture made us to understand that we serve a God who is able. Can you say, Lord, have mercy on me? Maybe when they worship, I've thought that, oh, no, I can't do this. Lord, how can I praise you? My situation cannot even warrant that praise. But Lord, help me to understand that you are God. When the worship team is ministering today, I want us to understand this. Their ministration is not to entertain us. They are glorifying God. You, in that moment, as you are listening, glorify God as well. Whether you know the lyrics or not, it is not about that. I was telling my husband, the first time I became, I came, I was a Muslim. The first time I went to church, I didn't know the lyrics of the song, but I knew that God was there. I was crying, I was screaming. I just knew that this was the moment I wanted to be in. And God has been good the whole time. I want us to lift up our voice right now and get ready to praise. We have a God who is great. Whether you know the song or not, do you remember? It is about our hearts. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We give you glory, O Lord. The scripture says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. He said, the king of glory shall come in. He said, who is that king of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. The ancient of days. He is the one who is the king of glory. Jehovah Hamashiach. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the one who measures the waters for the hollows of his hands. He is the one who is the governor above all nations. We are here today, oh God. As we praise Lord, every gate is lifted. Every obstacle is lifted. Every burden is lifted. Your word says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And today we bask in that strength. Lord, I exchange my weakness for your strength. Today, Lord, I look unto you. I do not look unto my battle, but I look unto you, O God. And Father, your word says that you are the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Second Chronicles 20, 22 said, as they praised. In God, Mount Zion is about to praise you. We pray that as we praise, O God, our bodies are lifted. Our enemies are leveled in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, do your way, O God. Have your way, Lord, and do that which only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah.